Hello everyone and welcome to the Well of Curiosity. So recently, NASA launched its Perseverance rover towards Mars, the latest in a long line of spacecraft sent to explore the Red Planet. Now this has inspired me to make this video a timeline of sorts, to take a look at some of those Martian explorers, what they were like and what their missions were to bring us to where we are now. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Starting off our list are Mariner 3 and Mariner 4 that were both launched in November 1964. They were designed to carry out the first flybys of Mars. Unfortunately, during the launch of Mariner 3, the shroud that encased the spacecraft on top of its rocket failed to open properly and the probe did not end up getting to Mars. Mariner 4 had better luck and reached its target in July 1965. The craft was able to collect the first close-up photos of the red planet. The pictures showed impact craters similar to the ones that we can see on the moon, with some frosted over from the cold Martian environment. In February and March of 1969, a few months before the infamous Apollo 11 moon landings, a second pair of Mariner missions were sent to Mars to complete another flyby, Mariner 6 and Mariner 7. Both were very successful, flying over the equator and the south polar region, analysing the atmosphere and the cratered surface as they went. In May 1971, a third and final pair of Mariner missions were launched, Mariners 8 and 9. Both were designed to be orbiters rather than just performing a flyby, which marked a planned transition in our exploration from mere flybys to extended stays. Unfortunately, Mariner 8 suffered the same sort of fate as Mariner 3, failing during the launch. However, Mariner 9 was much more successful. Upon its arrival, it observed a great dust storm that it was obscuring the surface of the entire planet that persisted for around a month before it eventually cleared, revealing the gigantic volcanoes and canyons, as well as what appeared to be ancient dried up riverbeds that were carved into the landscape. Mariner 9 also managed to provide us the first close-up photos of Mars's moons, Phobos and Deimos. In 1975, two more missions were launched, Vikings 1 and 2, each one consisting of an orbiter and a lander, to obtain high-resolution images, to analyse the structure and composition of the surface and atmosphere, and to conduct the first test to see if life on another planet was possible. Originally designed to work for just 90 days, the Viking spacecraft ended up working for over six years. In that time, the landers collected four and a half thousand photos, with the orbiters above collecting another 50,000. Jumping forward to the 1990s now, which was a rocky time for NASA and their Martian explorers. September 1992 saw the launch of the Mars Observer, designed to study the geology and climate of Mars from orbit. Even though the launch was good, contact was lost with the probe shortly before it arrived at Mars and the mission failed. <laughs> In 1996, more success was had with both the Mars Global Surveyor and Pathfinder. The Surveyor studied Mars for nearly 10 years from orbit, far longer than its planned two-year mission. Amongst its achievements was the finding of large concentrations of the mineral hematite, which often forms under wet conditions, evidence of a possible river delta from the ancient past, and the detection of localised magnetic fields, a clue that the planet may have had a global magnetic field similar to Earth's. Meanwhile, Pathfinder was designed to land on the surface, slowing its descent by means of a parachute and the use of airbags to cushion the impact. 
A small rover called Sojourner accompanied Pathfinder, allowing us to drive across the surface of Mars for the very first time. The landing site of Eris Vallis was selected as both a safe landing zone and an opportunity to collect samples from a wide variety of rocks in an area thought to be an ancient floodplain. Between the lander and the rover, photos, weather data and chemical samples were collected to be analysed here on the Earth. And upon further investigation, it has led us to believe that Mars used to be a lot warmer and wetter than it is today. The end of the 90s for NASA's Mars Exploration Programme were nothing short of a complete disaster. 1998 saw the launch of the Mars Climate Orbiter, designed as an interplanetary weather satellite. Unfortunately, upon arrival, it entered the atmosphere too low and completely burned up. The following year, the Mars Polar Lander left for Mars, accompanied by two small probes called Deep Space Two. Now this was designed to land near the South Pole and dig in the frozen terrain for water ice with a robotic arm. Unfortunately, this too was lost upon arrival. In 2001, a new orbiter was launched and inserted into Mars's orbit. This was the Mars Odyssey which is still operating as of the release of this video. It was designed to study and map in great detail the elemental composition of the surface of Mars, as well as to work out the geological processes that have shaped the planet. An added goal of its mission was to take measurements of radiation in the Martian environment, which could be used to evaluate the risks to human astronauts if and when we get there in the future. Building on the success of the small rover from the Pathfinder mission, 2003 saw the launch of two much larger, much more powerful and much more sophisticated rovers, Spirit and Opportunity. Their aim was to search for evidence of water on two different parts of Mars. Gusev Crater, which is thought to have been home to an ancient lake, and Meridiani Planum, where concentrations of hematite had been located by the Mars Global Surveyor. Both rovers lasted for a very long time. Spirit worked for six years, whereas Opportunity worked for over 14 years, which is amazing when you consider the rovers were designed for just a 90-day mission. They were very successful, finding more evidence that pointed to a wetter Mars in the past, improving our understanding of the Martian weather, and raising our hopes of finding evidence of past life. In the summer of 2005, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was launched, marking the next step in the Mars Exploration Program. Its primary mission was to study the geology and climate of Mars, but to also scope out future landing sites and to act as a communication satellite, helping us to talk to the missions on the ground. The first to benefit from this was a lander called Phoenix. Launched in 2007, which landed on the northern polar region of Mars, with the goal of digging up and analysing the icy soil to assess whether it had the potential for harbouring microbial life, and to give us a better understanding of the history of water on Mars. <laughs> Two thousand and eleven saw the launch of the even larger and even more capable rover Curiosity. Now it had the job of trying to answer one question: Did Mars ever have the right environmental conditions for supporting microbial life? Now its landing site was Gale Crater, which is another location thought to have been the site of an ancient lake. Its landing was a little different to Pathfinder and the twin rovers that came down before it, slowing down with a parachute before firing rockets from the landing system to hover in the air as Curiosity was lowered down with a tether. 
It is capable of analysing the soil and rocks, measuring their composition and determining their history, especially their past interactions with water. Curiosity is still driving around Mars and is currently exploring Mount Sharp, a mound in the centre of the crater. In 2013, a new orbital spacecraft was launched, named the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Mission, or MAVEN for short. Its aim was to study the atmosphere and climate of Mars. Gas is slowly escaping from Mars's atmosphere out into space. By measuring the rate that gas is lost, scientists can try and work backwards from the data it sent back to recreate what Mars might have been like in the past and how it turned from a potentially habitable planet into the cold, barren world we see today. Until 2018, the mission sent to Mars were primarily focused with what was going on at the surface, until InSight was launched. Now, InSight stands for Interior Explorations Using Seismic Investigations, Geodesy and Heat Transport. So thank goodness they shortened it. The aim of this mission is to study Mars's interior in great detail, essentially taking the vital signs of the planet, like temperature and seismic activity, to see how active it is. InSight is equipped with a mole, a drilling instrument that can burrow down through the soil to help try and gain a more accurate idea of what is happening inside this planet. Unfortunately, at the time of filming, this mole is stuck, as the soil on Mars is behaving a little differently to what was expected. This investigation is designed to help us not just understand how Mars works, but how all terrestrial planets work. All of this brings us to 2020 and the launch of the Perseverance rover, the largest, most complex Mars rover ever constructed. Its task is to seek out signs of ancient life on Mars, as well as to collect rock and soil samples that may one day be retrieved by later missions and returned to Earth. Its landing site has already been chosen as Jezero Crater, yet another former lake. Except this one contains one of the best river delta deposits on the planet. Perseverance is not going to Mars alone. It will be accompanied by a small helicopter called Ingenuity, which will allow us to fly around Mars for the very first time. This will be much more difficult than flying on Earth, as the Martian atmosphere is less than 1% the thickness of the Earth's. NASA are already planning their next mission to the Red Planet, and I haven't even mentioned any of the other countries and their efforts to reach Mars, so this list is far from complete. But I do hope that you have enjoyed this trip through the history of NASA's Martian explorers. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. If you really enjoyed the video, then subscribe and share it with everyone. Keep your eyes peeled for more videos coming in the future. Goodbye for now.